Hello and welcome to another episode of My Life on the Line, a podcast by Ref Coach. Sorry, sorry, Ben. What the hell was that? Yeah, it's alright. You can't even talk. <laughs> you can't even talk. He's embarrassed. He? That's alright. Don't make any noise. I'm Jack, and once again, I'm joined by Ale and Benji. Today, we are really lucky to have a legend of the online refereeing community. Our guest this evening is Jan from the Dutch Referee Blog. Jan, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm very happy to join you. Hey, Jan. Great to meet you. Finally, after all this year, reading your blog. We're in the presence of a, a legend of online refereeing, I think. <laughs> so many times without a referee, we said, hey, have you seen the latest appointments or have you seen that article on the Dutch, Dutch Referee's website? And Finally, we get to we get to talk to you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be uh, to be a guest on your podcast. I've been listening to it. I've been watching the uh, Facebook group and page. So uh, yeah, it's great to be on the podcast now, and I'll try to uh, look more often. And I'm more than happy to share the group and the uh, podcast itself uh, on my pages as well. So that would be great for people to listen to. Amazing, so, uh, amazing. Yeah. Ref coach featured by the original. The online one and only. Ref. The original <laughs> online ref. The, the OG. The OG <laughs> online ref code. Makes you feel good about yourself. means we've done something right. <laughs> so, Jan, maybe do you want to start by giving the listeners an overview to what Dutch Referee is, if, if they haven't come across it themselves, and, and maybe a little bit about your story as Dutch Referee and, and your story yourself as a referee? Yeah, that's great. It's actually this month, it's my 10th anniversary of Dutch Referee Blog. It's um, June, 10 years ago, I started with uh, the blog. And the idea of starting a blog is, or was, if there was attention for referees in the media, it was always because they made a mistake. And that's what I didn't like. I thought there's much more to say about refereeing. So I started like doing interviews, sending emails to referees. And first interview was with an Austrian referee because he was open to speak about his career, what he did. So it was much more about giving an insight into the refereeing world. And over the years, my blog has um, evolved, becoming much more of a learning platform, a platform where referees can see case studies, read interviews with top referees, but also like doing recently a bit more about fitness for referees, giving tips to everyone like have you ever thought about core stability or have you ever thought about how to improve your sprints? So it's been more in the educational platform now. It's going great. Like the blog grows as pretty well. And um, I've become an, a referee instructor in the Netherlands as well. So in the meantime, I refereed like till my games. I'm, I'm a youth referee in the Netherlands. I've climbed up to, I was too old to, to, to reach the professional level because I was, I was refereeing at the same club. For years up in the Netherlands, it's very common to uh, referee at one club and you referee different youth teams or adult games. What, what I could do is combine it with playing myself. So I've been playing football for up to my 25th. Then I moved to The Hague, it's where I live now in the Netherlands. And then I started refereeing and focusing on that. And then you can go to KVB, that's our football association. And then you can like climb up the ladder. But when you're 25 already, too old to go up to a uh, professional level so but you can still improve and that's what my goal is every year like trying to reach that next step i've been up to the second first division which is the second tier in uh, dutch youth football so first division teams yeah seeing lots of professional teams at the second level great experience and like it's great to see how you like improve as a referee and now i'm working as an instructor as well for two years it's great to see new referees coming and then what you see is our referees want to learn and you want to keep them educated, but you also want to inspire them so they keep learning themselves. So it's, um, yeah, that's what I've been up to the last couple of years. And, and yeah, the blog has brought me lots of experiences all over the world now. I think the most amazing thing of what you said, it's something that aligns with our mission. And one of the things that we repeated a couple of times in the podcast is that you mentioned you wanted to show to the public that there's more to referees that just match day and the mistakes we make. And that's what we said a couple of times is our goal through this podcast is humanizing referees because the public sometimes don't understand the sacrifice and uh, efforts and the training and the pressure that referees go through from the youth levels up to the, the top tiers in FIFA. Many, many referees give up so much, give up their times 
And let's be honest, the pay until you get to the top, it's not that good. So you don't do it for the money. You don't do it for the power rush. You do it for the love. We always say if we wanted to do this refereeing for the money, if we were doing it for the money, we'd just work at McDonald's instead. <laughs> yeah, no, I will never do it for the money. And the, even the instructing, you, know, you get paid for give, giving the courses, but that's not what I do for money. That's because I love to referee. And I got some passion about refereeing going in there. And it's great to see these like new referees coming over and they want to improve. They want to be, really become a referee. And that's great to see. Now it's not for the money. No, we get 20 euros per game. So <laughs> that's uh, that won't pay for your engagement dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. It's not the anniversary, anniversary dinner. Not Otherwise, anniversary. if the wife hears that, she's like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> What made you decide to start refereeing in the first place? What was the, the trigger moment and you went, okay, I'm crazy enough to do this? <laughs> I was a, as a player, I thought I knew the rules much better than um, the referees of my games. I wasn't playing in the highest team in my age group, but in the second team. But yeah, we got mostly club referees, so the referees of the home team. Um, but sometimes they made a decision and I thought, Sometimes they didn't see it right in my eyes, but sometimes I thought this is not the correct decision based on the laws of the game. And sometimes I had like discussions with, no, yeah, I had discussions with them. I have to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, like my wife or people, friends, they, everyone said, you never got a yellow card for talking to the referee or having comments on the referee because that's what I did quite a lot, I think. There was one referee who came over to me and he said, this is the final warning. He, what's your name? So he wrote my name down in his book. This is your final warning. He put the book back. I thought, okay, he's <laughs> he's very trouble. serious about it. <laughs> but then I thought, if I think I know the rules better, I better start and do referee course. And I, I volunteered at my club. I said, oh, I want to be a referee. I did seven aside games from the beginning. And they had someone over who was an experienced referee or former referee. And he, yeah, he helped me around doing the first stuff. In the first three seven aside games, I gave two penalty kicks. But he said, these are small kids. They just, it's not a big foul. Maybe you should not like hand out penalty kicks so easily in these games. No, but <laughs> it's doing that. But and that's how I got into it. It, it was a pleasure. And, and, um, and then I, the blog started and yeah, spent lots of time a week being involved in refereeing. The rest is history. history. Yeah. <laughs> it's very similar to my story. I, I support Inter Milan in Italy. And I remember watching a game and just, you know, in Italy, it's a national sport talking, talking crap about the referee. <laughs> so I remember everyone, we were all like, oh, the referee cost us the game. And one day I said, no, hang on. Why, if they're so bad, why are they there? And read the laws of the game on Wikipedia, not even joking. That's where I first read <laughs> on Wikipedia. And that's where I went, I know nothing. And that's when I decided to start the course. So you gave away two penalties. When you play, you play as a striker by any chance? Yeah. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Now we know. Now we know why you gave away two penalties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've always been a striker. I've uh, usually was a left or left winger. Uh, I'm right footed, but there were not many left footed people in in our club. So apparently, I was the left striker. Uh, I wasn't good. I didn't have much skills, but <laughs> I was very fast. That was my skill. So just running 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 that's what i did and when i went to university i started playing futsal and that's what helped mm. me like, getting a better overview of the game and that helped me playing football but it also helped me think as a referee like being more relaxed being more focused and not you don't have to rush things so it, it can't be done i think yeah i was just a quick striker <laughs> <laughs> reliving the glory days it's good to hear someone who plays real football and actually played on the pitch i'm like these two and half the guests we seem to have who are referees that said oh i used to play football and we say what position and they said oh, i would play as goalkeeper <laughs> it doesn't really count oh, yeah. does it <laughs> why do you why do you think we become referees because we because we can't kick a ball <laughs> that's the, that's the reason yeah yeah no i've always never been a goalkeeper no but i hear a lot many more goalkeepers in the refereeing world it's common it's it's a strange phenomenon being a maniac i think it goes like you know you ca you're not good enough to play on the field so they put you in goals and see if you're good and then when you get like in a seventh division team as a third goalkeeper, when there's no place for third goalkeepers, then that's when you realize, okay, I cannot play football. Speak for yourself, Alex. 
Oh, it's, it's all right, whatever. I'm sure you were a great goalkeeper. That's why Manchester United signed you. Oh, actually, no, they did not. <laughs> She's vicious. No one's safe. No one's safe. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Spitting straight fire. So Dutch referee, it's been going around for, for 10 years. What's been your proudest achievement over that time? I was thinking about that. What would be the proudest thing I've, I've done with my referee blog? In the end, I thought, what I like the most is when some referees, like I got messages from Africa or wherever they come from, Asia, all over the world, actually. And then someone meant, emails you and says, your blog really helped me become a better referee. I learned something. I want to continue it. I want to go through with it. That's what makes me really proud. Realizing that people will really benefit from it. That's what I do it for. I want to help people out. Some funny things are, and it's not what I'm most proud of, but like when I went to um, one of the referee abroad tournaments, it's where Danielle is one of the previous podcasts. I've been to one of their tournaments, and then people came over to me and they said, hey, you're, you're a Dutch referee. Can we take a picture of you? They can selfies. And I thought, but I don't feel like I'm famous or something. But it's, it's a great realization that people think, oh, you're doing something for the referee community. I want to have a picture with you. Oh, yeah, and, and I need to make sure, sometimes I'm, I'm quite modest and I don't want to ask professional referees this or that because I think, yeah, they might be busy or they might not know me or whatever. And that's what I've learned over the years that if you just ask, you might be able to get something out of them. Some people just don't want to interact in public and some don't want to share tips but sometimes people want to help you behind the screens or i'm a huge batch collector for example like the referee batches you put on the on the shirt and i got them from all over the world but it's great to have one from a fifa referee so sometimes i i just send a message to one of the fifa referees like please do you have a batch for me just randomly email i thought you know i'll just tick the boxes for these referees mm -hmm. and maybe I'll get them, maybe not, but I'll just ask it now because you never know if they're going to help you and help you with a story or a podcast or whatever you make creating for referees. And there are lots of referees who apparently want to help out younger referees or readers of the blog or whatever. That's also right. recently I got asked by a FIFA fitness instructor. I thought, just I'll just ask him, how do you prepare for a fitness test? And he gave some advice. He was a FIFA instructor from Kenya and Africa. And, I, and he said, oh, I'm happy to help. And he just, he, he typed something, I made a nice story out of it. And apparently I should ask more and then people will join and, and makes the referee community bigger. And, and ev if everyone helps each other, then like we can improve as referees. That's what I'm proud of as well. Like being able to help and seeing everyone else like joining that community. I think that's something we've really found too. And it's something to be proud of. Well, I've become quite part of the refereeing community yeah. as a whole, like you've touched on, Jan, is that people are so willing to help. And I think we found it too. You know, sometimes people are just afraid to ask, but there's people at these, you know, really elite levels that will just give their time and will just help out for the good of the game, for the good of football and for the good of refereeing. And it, it is something fantastic about yeah. the refereeing community, I think. Yeah, and we always say we're the third team on the pitch, but... I always like to say whenever even I do courses for referees, it's when you're out there, you're not just representing yourself as a referee, but you're representing all the referees in your federation and all the referees all around the world. And that's really who we are. We're not a team that goes out on the pitch on a Sunday and wins the game, but we never win. But we represent something that is bigger than football. To me, it's like it's almost like a brotherhood. And that's mm. been great. Like even when I reached out to you, Jan, you as soon as you could, we got in touch and within a week we're chatting and it's just good to be in touch with other people. They share this passion mm. and this love for the game and this will to help. Yeah, and they can share that support that we've talked about before in this podcast that as referees, often you've got the players against you, you've got the coaches against you, you've got the crowd against you. As referees, we have to support each other because if we don't, then no one will. Yeah, I think that's important and that's also like speaking of like helping each other, like I've been in touch with Kate Jeswich. I'm not sure if you pronounce that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, I've been in touch with Kate Jeswich, and she she got up to the A-League panel in Australia, and I thought I'll just try to find a way to text her or email her. I'm, I'm not sure how we reached out to her. And then she said, yeah, I want to help referees, and uh, she also 
also like did an interview with me. We do a Q and A, just asking questions. And one of the things uh, she said, and that was like, you might coaches have again, you might have coaches against you or whatever. One of her tips to the referees was treat each other like you want to be treated. So if you want to have a good communication and relation with players and coaches, and yeah, they might think you're suck, you suck at refereeing or whatever. Uh, that's what they think. Maybe they don't say it, but in the end, some might think so. But if you give them like the proper example or you give them what you want to receive from them in return, yeah, that could help you become a better referee. And that's, yeah, one of the things that got into my mind when you're talking about. It. She was also happy to help me out and, and share some knowledge. And yeah, I really like that. Yeah, we're not Kate. So, yeah, well, yeah. She's, she's from here. She's a local. So with, uh, I actually had Kate been my fourth official in one of my last games in the, <laughs> in the top tier in Victoria here four years ago. Must have, oh, long, I was going to say, it must have been long, long, was a long, was a long time ago. It was a long time ago, but I remember, I mean. Kate's made the A-League since then. And, uh, yeah. I, what have you done? <laughs> Thank you. I'm there kidding. You I'm just getting you the back. Pe the, uh... the people I deal with. So I have a question. How many badges have you collected so far from referees? <sighs> It's a good one. I didn't count them. I lost count of them. I think I got over over 300, I think, 400. I got a few Australian ones. I got a few signed ones. Hakan Anas, he's a former FIFA World Cup referee, yeah, assistant referee. Yeah, he ran my line once before going to the World Cup. Oh, wow. This was like eight oh, years ago. Cool. Okay. Yeah, it was one of the only times he was in Victoria resting. <laughs> Because he was in touring with uh, with William Ben Williams and Cream was it yeah Matthew? yeah and uh, he he needed the practice game so just something to do it was again the top tier here and I'm like I see this guy on my appointment and I'm like I googled him like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> I was like okay yeah that's great yeah it's always uh, that's nice he was a nice guy He's incredible well. yeah. a few badges I got one from Tasmania um, I even got an Australian referee shirt because I went to the referee broad tournament and oh, there, there were a go. few guys who apparently read my blog and they said, yeah, we got a gift for you because we you reading your blogs. And I think I don't have anything for you, but <laughs> I, found some, I found some badges in my uh, suitcase and I thought I'll just, yeah, give it to him. It's a great surprise too. Uh, so I'm, I use it for training sessions now. So if I'm going out for a training session, I'm using my Australian referee shirt. Which, is it is it uh for do you know if it's from a certain state or where is it from? No, it's not a state badge. It's uh, just the um, the FFA logo. Uh, the FFA our federation. Logo. Yeah, after yeah one I got a purple one. He got a zipper on it. I don't know. After oh, there must be New South Wales. I think New South Wales at the oh, Uni Pro like, with yeah, a zipper like, on. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's because we've gone through so many tops over the years here. Yeah? We've gone Adidas, we've gone Maitre, we've gone... Yeah, what was the okay. other one? We're slowly getting back to football here in Melbourne uh, after the long break and I was packing up my bag and I feel like a Power Ranger with all my different colours and <laughs> outfits. Yeah, we do. Uh, recently, we do have Nike uh, referee kits, so we uh, yeah, and we don't have to wear the most recent ones. We can wear whatever colour has mm -hmm. been used uh, in the Netherlands or in FIFA or UEFA tournaments. So we can basically wear every color uh, brands. Yeah, you can do what you want. So we don't have like one brand that you have to wear. But because if you want to work as a team, it's good to have some Nike kits because everyone has them. So you can work together. Otherwise, you had a yellow Adidas, a yellow Nike. It wouldn't go. It wouldn't go together. So if you really want to look as a team, you want to have the latest kits. But we're free to wear what we want. When football's coming back, you need to pack your back again. I'm yeah, like, oh. definitely. Has football come back in in the Netherlands? Uh, football is not yet back. It's when we're recording this. It's just in June, and uh, football gets back on the first of July. Then you can organize friendlies, and I've seen a few friendlies scheduled. I don't have any appointment yet, but I'm eager to message a few clubs to if they want to have a referee because that would be great to referee again because we've been out for so many months uh, but we can train together with our referee association uh, in the Netherlands you, if you become a part of a referee association you, we can tr train twice a week at a with a trainer and uh, yeah we do sessions uh, that are quite intense one hour long and it's great to uh, get fit again so um, I try to train at home during the lockdown and I did quite well I think it, I had to stick to it but I have to uh, say that it's great the training sessions at the 
appreciation are back because then you meet friends, you can see other people, you can talk about stuff. So that feels great. And I'm uh, during the summer, I'm going to give a few training sessions as well because we want to continue and lots of people might be off for holidays as in Europe, you can travel now here and there. So there are not many trainers. So I try to give some training sessions as well. So it's a new experience for me, but it's also a pleasure to develop me in that myself in that way. And I'll, I'll put them on my blog and work on it. So I'm happy to train, but I'm very eager to get back onto the field of play for a match. I think it's the social side as well is, is something I didn't think I, or I didn't realize I'd miss so much in refereeing, but it was such a huge hole in our lives. Like, you know, you think it's just refereeing, you forget about the connections and the people you meet and these people who become your friends and people who are your colleagues. Become your family. Yeah, they do. They become your football family, your teammates. And that was definitely something I learned when we were in lockdown. We're similar to you in Holland. We've just gone back to training recently here in Victoria. Was how much I just missed the social aspect of, of going to training in the evenings and seeing people. Definitely good to have that back. Yeah, for sure. I really, really appreciate appreciate it going back. And I wrote an article a few years ago on Medium and sort of discussing how personally at least I found refereeing changed my personality as well. If we were having this conversation probably 15 years ago when I was 16, I would have been, I would have been first of all, I would have been a metalhead with long hair playing the bass. <laughs> so nothing like that, that I'm bald. Uh, <laughs> but I would have been totally shy. I would have been very self-conscious. Whilst when I started refereeing and I ended up under the spotlight and constantly under pressure and constantly challenged to talk to people and manage players and manage coaches, that changed me completely because I got out of my comfort zone, which is very cliche to say, but it did. I got out of my shell and I started talking more and now I'm the opposite. I basically cannot shut up. Oh, yeah. I wish we could shut up. (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea. It builds well into a question that I was going to ask. Outside of football and Dutch referee blog, what do you do and how has refereeing changed? Has it affected you in the workplace? Has it changed life otherwise? Yeah, I work as an online communication expert. So I work in um, for Royal Visio. It's an organization that helps uh, blind and uh, visually impaired people. So I jokingly said when, I'm, uh, when I was going to get the job day, I said, I'm already blind. So that's <laughs> Yeah, I do online communications there and uh, it's great to for my personal development as well to be a referee because as what Ali said, it's about your own development and um, I can talk like conversational with people, like then I would talk a lot. But if I'm in a meeting or if I'm in a group, I would be more laid back. I would not be the first one to respond. If there's a question in a group, I would first think about that and then I would say my ID and I, I just have to think about it. But there are lots of colleagues in my expertise. They just like go. They just drop what they want to say. They're just eager to respond. And being a referee, you need to be proactive. That's what I learned a lot. Also, you need, if you have a certain role, you need to speak up. You need to say, okay, this is it. We're not doing this or that, or you shouldn't do this. And that's what you can bring into personal life as well. What works, even my work, like sometimes you need to set boundaries for or projects or other things like like, no, you can't do anything straight away. So I've been, it helped me personally as well. So I, I've become a better employee, I think. I, yeah, they were happy that I do this and I need to be, I can still work on that, but it's great to how refereeing helps you in your personal life as well. I, I'm very happy with that and how that you find that. I'm being much more proactive and I dare to ask things and I'm making better decisions and quicker decisions and just sometimes make a decision that, Maybe at work, nobody likes, but sometimes a decision is better than nothing. That's what you learn from refereeing as well. That's As a person, it helped me a lot. Well, we know now why the blog is so successful. If online communication is your uh, <laughs> your, your line of work, well, that, that would have been almost like second nature. Yeah, I worked as a journalist before, so I studied communication and journalism. So I worked as a national press agency here in the Netherlands, and then they had to quit. So I had to find a different job. And because I studied communications, I went to that job interview and they said what you did on the blog already was a pleasure to see and that was just the start of that Jeffrey blog but they said yeah what you're doing online already like going on I had a Facebook page and I had all social media accounts and I was interacting with people online that's what they liked so they said yeah you're doing already online communication that's what we want 
And now I've grown into yeah a bit of different role, more developing new websites and then becoming more strategic. But uh, I think the blog actually helped me on my current job. So that's great to have as well. So. Dutch Referee is one of the best refereeing resources on the internet. Go have a look for yourself at dutchreferee.com. You've got quite an active social presence just with the Dutch Referee blog and then also with yourself taking photos of maybe you're going to go referee a game. Do any of the players or people at the clubs when you go to the games know you and say, oh, that's the guy from Dutch Referee blog? Do you get a bit of attention? There was a team I had to referee. And one of the players was also a referee at his club. And uh, he was following me on social media and he responded. So, yeah, when the teams came in, I asked, I asked the coach about it. Say that player, Quinton, was he here or? Yeah, he's coming. He's coming. So, yeah, we had a quick chat about refereeing. And uh, if it goes well, sometimes tag the teams in it. I'm not doing that all the time. Online, what I usually don't do is uh, being very negative about certain situations. Or if I describe a situation, I would not mention teams or players because of the privacy so i i've never been in problem i never had problems with that and uh yeah people know i'm online sometimes clubs refer to it sometimes i ask the clubs if they have some video footage that i can use um, sometimes they say yeah the footage you can watch it yourself to learn so i get the like we transfer link to uh, the to the whole match so i can learn it for learn myself analyze the match but they don't want to map too much on social media but there are a few photographers at clubs they just say Oh, you're there again. Just tell me in advance next time because we can take some pictures of the referee and what you see, like some clubs have a, a Facebook album with lots of pictures of, uh, of the game. And in the end, you can see five or six referee images. That's just they add them because I asked them to take a few pictures. <laughs> yeah, I love to share them, but I only ask, I uh, share them with permission because I don't want to get issues with copyright and stuff. But yeah. like, many, many clubs are quite eager on... Uh, on their photo being published they're usually not professional photographers mostly members of the club or parents and they are fine and one yeah one person once said to me like no it costs you five 50 euros i said fine then it's no deal so i don't <laughs> use the picture but yeah i'm just volunteering at the moment and uh, that's not going to happen i'm not paying 50 euros for uh, for this that's a similar with clips i'd love to share more clips but i'm a bit anxious about copyright issues but I feel your pain. That's uh, that's something that we sort of have encountered a problem we have encountered in the in the group. But there's there's a lot of stuff out there already. It's good, you know, with YouTube and all this sort of stuff again as well. We've been kind of lucky. From from this point of view, one question I had was: What are the main challenges that you've encountered when running your blog as Dutch referee and your social media? Is there anything in particular or there's ever been anything that, you know, over 10 years, obviously, if it's all been smooth sailing, I definitely need to get online uh, communication lessons from you. <laughs> but it would be great to see, like, you know, if there was any challenge and how you, did you overcome them? Yeah, I got some stories online and people, like, I'm very happy that KVB, my football association, helps me a lot. And they they, they support what I do online. Did I don't, I never had any issues with the KVB, like, saying, Jan, you should not publish things online. You're, what you're doing now is wrong. When I worked as a journalist, I want to, like, you, you're neutral. You want to have a good story on it. What I do now is more like, I want to help referees. And if I speak with the referee, I want to give them the chance to read it. If they said something they don't like, I'll just scrap it, even if they said it, because I want, it should be educational. I want to help referees. That's what it's about now. I've shared one story. There was a women's tournament. I think it was in Belfast. And um, there was a referee responding to my questions. And apparently she thought she could read it again before I put it online. Or she didn't realize the impact of getting that story online because she made a mistake that cost one of the teams get a tournament or a qualification for a big tournament. And she was very open to uh, talk to me on the on the blog about it. But when it went live, people around her went nuts. And she got lots of things to uh, deal with. So I, that's when I said, OK, I'll help you. I'll, I'll just put it offline. Even though she just agreed on a text like we've been emailing about it. She, she knew she typed the text herself for a part, for a big part. 
And I thought, yeah, I don't want to get any troubles with that. And I'll just put it online. And then I thought, oh, I will not do this. And I've had what I sometimes do, I do giveaways. Like sometimes I give something, some cards away or some, some goodies. I've had a World Cup guessing competition once. Uh, that was years ago. And then uh, one of the uh, sponsors said, we can sponsor a referee shirt. So I made a big statement on the blog that the winner gets a referee shirt and this and that. But the company never responded after that. So I didn't have any shirt to deal with. So I had to deal with yeah people participating in the in the contest and I didn't have the prize. And at that moment, yeah, it wasn't a start. I might be a student by then. So I didn't have the money to buy yeah, mm. a 60 euro shirt just for someone to give away. So that was a big issue for me. What you always have to realize when like people are watching, even at UEFA or whatever, like I was recently or recently, last season I was publishing the new shirts for the Champions League referees in Europe. But Apparently, they didn't want to do a launch of the kit, but I already had the pictures online. And um, <laughs> so someone from the UEFA, the referee department, no, this is too early. Yeah, that's what, when you have to deal with it. Like, what what, I'm, what am I going to do? So I, I backdated them so not everyone could find them. Because, yeah, I don't want to get issues with the referee department of UEFA because maybe they can mean something for me in the future. But I thought, yeah, you're sending out the kits to referees. So the referees took the, the images. Why would you send the kits to people and then you expect them not to share an image online? So I thought it was a bit... Crazy, but I want to keep keep them on my side, so I, I deleted the post. But it's difficult to <laughs> sometimes to deal with, and, um, and sometimes the what's difficult or what's challenge is it's just not my job, my blogs. It's just I do something I do on the side. So if you want to get into something or into the media department or into invitations for for meetings, sometimes it's you want to get into it and get invitations and then you want them to respond to you or you want to get be able to arrange an interview. And uh, I would love to speak with Colina. And I recently, I sent him an email, didn't get a response, but I thought I'll just send an email to the media department of FIFA and I didn't get a response. And I think, come on, I'm a blog, but I'm into, re if you was into refereeing, like people with a refereeing background would definitely read it. So you reach quite a good audience for that topic but yeah sometimes i hope to get more into it and, and get more possibilities to share the stories i didn't have many many struggles i think for the rest it worked quite well and the biggest struggle is finding time it's uh sometimes very difficult to to find time besides my job i want to have time with my wife uh i'm very lucky she has late shifts and uh, night shifts so she sleeps during the weekend or during the whole day so I got plenty of time to work on stories or blog, but time is usually difficult because you want to write stories, you want to do things, and then you think, oh yeah, it's sunny weather, let's go out for a beer, or it's good, or you want to do more than you can if you want to have like a life as well besides refereeing and working. Absolutely. Is your wife a nurse or a doctor? Yeah. Uh, my, my wife is a nurse as well. It's like we were meant to meet. <laughs> so many, so many parallels. The, the reason why we got into refing, the wife's doing the same job. Jackie's scrolling through your Instagram oh, feed. And... I've just got completely lost in your Instagram feed. I'm, I think I'm down to where I'm 2017. <laughs> but it's fantastic. I've never, I didn't realize you were so active on Instagram. But, oh, it's, yeah, what it's I do is... If you want to follow me on Instagram, um, no. <laughs> uh, no. I'm more than happy to follow everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think what? I just made it my goal of my refereeing career to be featured on Dutch Referee. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll feature you. That would be great. I only mean yeah, when I've actually become a good referee. I'm quite busy on the Instagram, yeah. And, and in the beginning, what I did was um, now you can like open the app on your phone and just take a screenshot and publish it. Uh, that gives a better quality. What I did before was the TV was on and then I asked my wife to put the game on pause and I was like kneeling before the television like making photographs. And I, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it, it's not good. Back. So that's what I did. <laughs> and now we can do screenshots of TV on HD. So it, the quality is much better. Sometimes you'll see an occasional photo of myself, but usually I'll try to share the professional referees. And in the stories, I'll do more of... Uh, tips for referees and I'm trying to get more into that. I haven't told my employee yet, but I'm trying to get more social media media followers on my blog than on their corporate account. But uh, <laughs> just a few hundred behind. So we'll cut this out of the podcast. It's a <laughs>
Oh no, I'm fine. I'll tell them. <laughs> uh that's amazing i can totally feel what you're saying because you're running this on your own it would be so much work and the first thing i did when i decided to start the the group which you might have the story of on one of the first episodes of the podcast but because i knew through max the guy that runs the italian group the ref coach sort of was generated from i straight away asked people that I trusted and I said, okay, we want to do this. We want to do it really well. We want to make sure that we are different. And now there's uh, two of us mainly looking most of the times at the group. Uh, Jack helps out a fair bit. We always discuss the episodes and the incidents and even comments sometimes because obviously we've done a fair bit of moderation. If there's comments that are not appropriate, we go and delete them and contact whoever has done it and say, hey, look, we've done this because... So we make sure that everyone is still listened to. And having a team for me especially has helped a lot. So I got so much respect for you because you've been doing this on your own for 10 years. And even keeping the motivation up must have been one of the things that, yes, we do love refereeing, but as you said, you got a life. And I mean, a beer on a sunny day, especially in the Netherlands, it's hard to beat. <laughs> so it's one of those things where I feel so lucky to have the guys that are with me in this in this journey because it gives you so much motivation and also helps with time but you're doing everything on your own it's it's amazing what i try to do yeah in the beginning i thought i'm dutch referee but what i see now is like last season there was a canadian referee who wants to help on the laws of the game quizzes so he, he com composes a few questions i've been in touch with a canadian guy who checked my laws of the game quizzes so i did the quizzes and he just checked them like is the answer correct did you take the correct boxes is your grammar correct because i'm not a native speaker of english and sometimes you put words differently and they think mm, you could change it a little bit and tweak it so it might work well and actually last year i met this canadian guy uh, when i was over for a wedding in canada he said yeah come over for barbecue so that's also what the blog brings to me like when i'm abroad i try to meet people and yeah It was a pleasure to meet that guy and see him, meet his family, have a barbecue. And yeah, my wife was talking with uh, with his wife and, and playing with the kids in the garden. And we were constantly, like, for one or two hours, just constantly refereeing, refereeing. Like, how, how do you do this? What have you been up to? And it's great to see people in person as well. So, uh, yeah, but I try to find more time to work with people. And I'm uh, hoping to do more like that. I would... I'm about to speak with someone at UEFA who does the psychology part and uh, she gives um, lectures to them. I just want to chat with her about topics or what would be good or what would not be good. So I'm trying to ask more people for advice or maybe they then also want to write a story or um, give some tips. That would be great for me. And I'm also for, I got a session Fitness Friday. I do that for next season every Friday again. And like, I got a lot of fitness experts now around me and I try to interview them for with tips on a different topic like nutrition, core stability, how to improve your sprints. So I try to get a few more people around me because if I want to grow or want to get bigger, yeah, I definitely need some help to uh, for people to do that. And yeah, what you do with uh, even like managing a forum like you do, like a Facebook group, yeah, that would be so much work to to do that as well. But I really appreciate that you're doing it. It would be great to uh, to highlight that on my uh, channels as well. So. It's been a great 10 years for the Dutch Referee blog. You've sort of touched on it a bit now. What's next and where does it go from here? Yeah, I've been thinking about officially I'm uh, just an online website and not doing with it. But I'm thinking about could I like, register DutchReferee.com or Dutch Referee blog as a company just to... Maybe I could work something out and maybe in, in the near future, I can maybe give online lessons that people can. Of course, there will, there will be lots of blog posts and videos, but I'm thinking if I want to do more with refereeing, one of the goals for 2020, so in the autumn of this year, I want to register myself at least as a company, just like that people can't pick the name or uh, like it's my brand or whatever. Uh, that's something I want to do, but I also want to like regularly post videos. I'm, um, I did a video course uh, to edit videos, how to make proper scripts and do more with that. So I can like publish more videos on YouTube. So that's what I'm doing as well, like more videos because more, lots of referees want to 
they don't want to read, but they want to see things like the clips uh, that you're posting, but they also want to see the tips or hear it or uh, like in the podcast and they want to use new media to get into their refereeing schooling or uh, webinars or whatever. So that's what I'm uh, thinking about for the for the upcoming year, for the new football season. You could expect more like that on mon And yeah, just want to share more tips and, and, and yeah, help people out. So for everyone listening on the podcast, what's the best way to get in touch and follow Dutch Referee blog? Of course, it's DutchReferee.com for the website. And that's where you can find uh, lots of tips on like all aspects that cover refereeing and not just making decisions, but also nutrition, fitness, core stability. But I'm most active on, uh, on Instagram. I got lots of interaction there. So on Facebook, uh, I'm on YouTube, Dutch Referee. Basically, Dutch Referee is my name everywhere. Um, if you search for Dutch Referee, you'll probably find me. Uh, there are a few yeah, fake Dutch refs. But, um, <laughs> the copycats. <laughs> That's when you know you've yeah. made it, Jan. When you have copy cut yeah. accounts, you know you've made it. <laughs> Dutch 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 and, um, yeah. So if you search Dutch referee and uh, you you can see my me on there. I'm wearing my referee kit. Uh, you see my glasses. Not many referees do wear glasses. Mm-hmm. So if you see a Dutch referee with glasses, that's me. So uh, <laughs> and, yeah, you can find me everywhere. If you want to message me, you can do it on the social channels, but also on yarn at dutchreferee.com. If you want to email me, that's fine as well. Sometimes I feel busy, so that if you don't get a response, just send it again, but I'll try to keep uh, into my inbox. And obviously, for all of our Ref Coach members, we'll post all of the links to Dutch Referee's um, blog and, and YouTube channel in our Ref Coach members group, so you can access all of the fantastic content that Yarn puts together for referees across the world. As a matter of fact, it's one of the useful links we have on our refcoach.org website homepage. It was one of the first ones when I was putting it together and said, well, what's a useful website? Dutch referee was clearly there. Definitely. That's appreciated. <laughs> awesome. Really yeah. insightful. Different ways of thinking through things. I can tell you're a very calm and composed person. I can imagine that flows through on the pitch when you're refereeing the games. I know sometimes when it's all happening, I have to try and yeah take lots of deep breaths and try and relax the games. And it looks like I reckon that that'd be you on the pitch, Mr. Cool, calm, collected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I'm very calm even when I'm instructing. Like when I was before you become an instructor here, there's one year when you have someone mentor you and uh, as an instructor. And I was in a class and one of the new referees he was talking and saying stuff like the mentor afterwards at me. Why didn't you tell him to shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> you stay so calm. I w- I couldn't do that. I thought, yeah, I'll just stay calm and just ask him politely to do things. And if there's really something I don't want, or if I want him to change his behavior, I'll definitely make sure. Maybe in my way, but I'll make sure he wouldn't he wouldn't do it again, or he wouldn't do it. And it's the same on the football pitch. But yeah, I always try to stay calm. That's. Sometimes it sometimes surprises me when I'm on the football pitch and then I say something and I think, what did you say, Jan? This is not you. Like, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it, it comes out of your mouth and then you think, hmm, it surprises me as a referee. Like, hmm. It's the persona. It's the face you put on. when For those 90 minutes, you're the referee. It's the acting, isn't yeah. it, which you have to do sometimes. You're no longer Jan. You are Dutch referee. <laughs> yeah. Jan. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's been amazing to finally get to talk to someone that personally I've been following for a long time and many referees around the world have had the pleasure to learn a lot from. It's been really good to find out more about you, find out more about Dutch referee and and the history of your blog. So thank you very much. We're very grateful for the opportunity we had tonight and I am sure we will be in touch again and I'm sure all our members and all the people that will listen to this podcast will get a lot out of it. So thank you very much for being with us tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure and can't wait to see what happens next on uh, dashreferee.com.
Thank you very much. It was a pleasure as well. And I'll keep listening to the podcast. Awesome. <laughs> we're, we're glad, but at least we know we have one listener. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, I'm joking. That's two. My mom listens to the podcast. <laughs> no, thank you very much, Jan. Really appreciate it. And, and thank you for all the great work you do on, on Dutch Referee. I know it's very much appreciated by referees here in Australia and all across the world. That's the recording done. Beautiful, that was great. Thanks, Jan. Um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite interesting to say the stuff that you want to do next because that's sort of what we've been thinking a lot about as well. Like, um, as I told you before, before the, the, we were, we're actually in my office here in Australia now. We're not at the same home, usually we're not at home. Um, but tonight we like, we set up the other meeting.